Okay guys, I just wanted to do this video and talk about open carry for a little bit. There seems to be a lot of discussion uh, going on and around the internet about open carry and a lot of people posting videos about this stuff, which I'll get into here in a little bit. Now me, myself personally, I don't have a problem with someone who lives in an open carry state and they want to use their right and be able to be assured that they're going to be able to keep their rights to open carry. Uh, I feel had concealed carry came first, a lot of open carry states might have never had open carry. Okay, but the open carry laws were still on the books when the concealed carry laws were put into place. Also be aware that um, the open carry law is a good thing because if for whatever reason you don't have a permit or you're in the process of getting your permit to conceal carry and you're waiting for it, you can still have a firearm on you, and I'm not going to be able to go into every state law, guys. I'm just going to be dealing with state law um, concerning Ohio. But in Ohio, if you are concealed carrying, you have to carry that gun a different way when you enter an automobile. Uh, basically, the gun needs to be unloaded. The ammunition and the gun need to be separated in the car, preferably like the gun in the trunk, and the ammunition may be locked in the glove box. Just as long as the two are separated, and it's not ready at hand. That's where that term comes into place, ready at hand. Okay, um, I'm not saying I agree with that law, it's just the way it is. But we have a lot of people that still like to open carry even though they're in a state where um, concealed carry is legal and a lot of people conceal carry. If the state also has open carry, you're still going to find some that even if they have their permit to conceal carry, they still want to open carry. And I have no problem with that because I feel like many others do, that if you don't exercise a right or use it and, and um, educate some of the public, that you could stand a great chance of losing that right. Now, it kind of went backwards in California. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, California's, basically, I'm not an expert on California law, Basically, the way the rundown was, was you could carry a firearm openly in public on your side, but the firearm could not be loaded with ammunition. But you could have spare magazines over here in your pocket that were loaded that you could easily put into the gun. That was legal. Now, it seemed to me like, I, I can't say for sure, but it seems to me like one of the things that hindered open carry in California and, and basically that law is gone now. They don't they no longer have open carry of handguns in any in any fashion in California that was taken away. But I noticed before that law was taken away a rash of people that were just walking around California uh, with a firearm unloaded and with ammunition in a magazine somewhere else that it seemed like they were just looking to document this on film for YouTube. And I don't always know if that's such a good thing because California lost it. It's gone. You can't carry, you can't openly carry a handgun concealed or not in California. Um, there was, uh, like, like I said, so many people putting up videos of stops in California and how the police would act and different things like that. And definitely California is, uh, I'm not going to say the whole state, but there, there is a large number of people that are anti-gun in California. And if you don't believe me, just look up their gun laws and their restrictions and everything you have to do uh, with firearms in that state. So there is a lot more of anti-gunners in California as compared to other places in the U.S. So before this whole big uh, thing came about now that we have that's so nice and wonderful to be able to use, which is the internet, YouTube, and all these video cameras, I don't ever see that there would have been an issue as much as there had been in California because before YouTube and the cameras and all this stuff, I don't I don't see people just out walking around trying to get the police or wondering if the police will interact with them so they could video it and post it to YouTube. Before YouTube and, and before all the video camera stuff, um, I don't see a citizen just walking around wanting to make interactions with the police, but because of YouTube and because of the cameras, there were a few, I'm not saying everyone, there were a few guys that were just specifically going out and walking in areas where they thought someone would call or the police would stop them and check them and they would document how it was, put it up on YouTube and run it that way. But they went backwards, they reversed. It did not help California in any way. Um, that comes into my next point. Like I said, I have no problem with anybody that wants to open carry where it's legal to do so, even if you have a concealed carry permit. That's your choice. 
but you do have to take some of the ramifications that's going to come with that and know and be aware that there are going to be some possible things that come with doing that that you are going to have to put up with. Uh, number one, a lot of times what's going to happen, especially when you hear with the media and you hear about these shootings, is some citizen, some soccer mom in a minivan or some guy, whoever, is going to call the police and say, hey, there's a guy out here walking around with a gun on, or walking around with a gun. And basically what, what happens is, is you know, you've got a citizen out there dressed like me, and he's got a holster, and he's got a gun in it, and these people will call and sometimes make the call sound worse than what it is. Say, there's a man out here with a gun. Well, you know how many different things that could mean there's a man out here with a gun? I mean, is he pointing it at businesses? Is he pointing it at buildings? That leaves so much open to question. But a lot of these people that are anti-gun, they want it to look as bad as they can. So the call goes out, you know, man with a gun, and sometimes a dispatcher will ask, well, what's he doing with it? And they'll say nothing. and say, well, where is the gun? Is it in his hand? No, it's on his side. Okay. Well, see, here's the thing. A lot of times you can't blame the police, okay, because uh, what happens is, is a call comes into dispatch, and now there's a record and a document of this call. So... 90% of the time, most officers are going to at least make a contact. Now, here's where you get into differences between good officers, bad officers, and what procedure they use. Okay, a good contact would be a call came in from a citizen. This call does need to be acted upon in some way because it was called in, someone was worried, whatever. So, an officer can then come out, walk up to you and say, hey, how you doing? You know, whatever, and uh, you just exercising your right to open carry man says yes sir that's what I'm doing okay that's the way it should go okay have a nice day that's the way it should go then the police officer uh, can put in his report about that from the login of the call to the contact that you know man was using his right to open carry he was open carrying okay uh, now one thing I do have a problem with is if a police officer is in a state that's open carry and he knows that he should know that the law in that state is it's legal to open carry and he approaches a man that is not being suspected of committing a crime that is not in the commission of a crime but just simply has a holstered gun on his side now see now that is a that is one of the cases where the police officer acted on his own he seen you and came up to you there wasn't a call that came out first on the call that came out first, what came in the dispatch, you need to blame, first of all, start blaming the media and blaming the citizens that called that are uneducated. The police officer has to follow up and do his job and go out and say, you know, hey, I made contact with this guy. He's open carrying. Boom, done deal. That call was now taken care of in the eyes of the law. But when a police officer just sees you and wants to come up to you when there is no suspicion that you're doing anything wrong. That's what, that's what I have a problem with. And there are some out there that will do that. For whatever reason, I don't know. But there are some that will do that. Now, like I said, I don't know the laws in every single state, so I'm going to speak more for my state, Ohio. When you are approached on the street, or if you were concealed carrying, which not a lot of people do in Ohio, and an officer comes up to you, there is no obligation to show your ID if there is no suspicion of a crime. Just because the police officer had a call that there was a man with a gun, <laughs> and there's a man with a gun on such and such street, and he sees you just walking along with a holstered sidearm, that does not in itself give enough give give suspicion or reasonable cause to pull ID. So for these people that do videos and they say, you know, I'm not going to give you my ID, I think that I think that's also I think that's I think that's cool. I think that goes along with what you're trying to show because that is also your constitutional right as well. You don't have to just give ID. You know, um, a lot, what what you'll hear a lot of these guys do, and it's smart, is when the police officer comes up, the first thing they say is, "Am I being detained?" and then the next thing they say is, well, or if the police officer just tries to talk over it or just keep talking and he says, can I see your ID? Then the next thing that the citizen says is, what crime am I being suspected of committing? Okay, these are, these are two good things that these people are saying, okay, because it's hard to get around those two things. And a lot of people are finding out about this because of YouTube. 
But I guess the only thing I have a problem with, with open carry, is people who are open carrying or open carrying rifles and taking a camera just to be able to go to a high traffic area so they can have a video for YouTube. What I'm going to ask you is, would you, if it was not for YouTube and your video camera, would you still open carry that rifle, that handgun, or both at the same time and walk around a busy part of your town if you were not going to document and use it for YouTube? Would you still do that? If your answer to that is yes, then I'm 100% for you using your right. If your answer to that is to no, then I do have some problems. Because you don't want to you don't want to keep making these confrontations just to get videos and then pretty soon um, a state wants to start changing laws based on that. Okay? Most people would not go out and walk around town with a strap that has seven or eight pounds around their neck and arm. But if you're if you're going to tell me that you'd carry a seven or eight pound AR-15 rifle if it weren't for YouTube and a video camera and walk around, well then that's fine. Now do you still have a right to walk into high traffic areas just to document this for YouTube? Of course, 100% you have that right. But just be aware that there's so many people doing this now that it almost seems that these some of these people may never even have opened carry if it wasn't for the prospect of, I'm going to go out and get a video. It's, it wasn't the fact of, I'm supporting my Second Amendment. I want to educate the public. It was for the fact of, I'm going to go get a video today. That was the number one thing in their mind. And then the second thing in their mind was, well, I'll get a good video. I'll put this AR-15 around me and walk in a high traffic area. I just don't see the full logic in doing it that way. Now, if you're someone that would just carry anyway, or carry a rifle without a camera with you, well then by all means go for it. And like I said, you're within your full rights to carry a camera and go out just to document this as well. But I just don't think that's the altogether right approach. The media is feeding so many people all these lies and falsifications about AR-15s and similar rifles such as that, that when a person that looks like a civilian is on the streets with an AR-15 rifle, because of what the media has fed these people, the first thing they think is chaos. They think of somebody out to kill random people and to murder people. And that does need to be changed. Not everybody out there that would have an AR-15, or 99.9% .9 of the people out there with an AR-15 are not going to harm a soul. But these people get so frightened because of things that have happened and the way the media has pushed their agenda, their liberal agenda down everybody's mouth, that you are going to get a lot of calls when you do such. And I think, I think for the most part it's a lot easier in public if you carry a sidearm over having an AR-15. An AR-15 draws a lot more attention, but it is your right to do so if you want to do so. Now where a big problem comes in is when you're in a state where people don't often open carry and you have an officer that's not too familiar with the law or how to handle this because he doesn't have a lot of experience in handling open carry situations and he, come, he comes at you very hard-nosed, uh, very rough so to speak, um, you may even have a gun pulled on you. It's happened before. Uh, look up on YouTube in Cleveland, Ohio, downtown Cleveland, Ohio. There was a guy that just dressed in jeans and a and a uh, heavy padded down coat in winter and was carrying an AR-15. It's a three-part video, and it ended up with him. They sent out like the uh, they sent out the chief, I, I believe. I can't remember, but they sent out the police chief to contact him. And across the street was an officer with an AR-15 at the ready. Hey, standing behind his cop car with another officer. Okay, open carry of a rifle handgun is legal in Ohio, but you just gotta understand that sometimes, especially if police aren't familiar with dealing with this situation, um, you're gonna have to understand that sometimes you are gonna get stopped, and it doesn't mean that the cops broke their constitutional oath if they stop you because there was a call. That call is logged, everything's documented. How the officer handles the call when he gets to you, that is where that officer should be judged. Okay, if he comes to you and he just says, hey, you open carrying today? You say, yep, just exercising my right. He says, okay, sir, have a good day. That's it, that was good, right? He followed up on the call, he did his job, he did what he had to do. And then he went, you know, went on with his business for that day. So whether you wanna open carry or not, it's up to you. Uh, I don't wanna get into a big debate about 
the element of surprise, but it's just common sense that if, you can, if you're a citizen and you conceal carry, there is then more of an element of surprise to someone. Um, and also, I'm going to stick up for the fact of what open carriers say is a deterrent in of itself with just the gun being in the open. And I, I have to give credit to that idea as well. I can see a lot of cases where a gun out in the open could have deterred many crimes that we never even know about because, you know, nothing happened and nothing was reported because someone seen someone open carrying and they decided not to commit the crime that they were going to do. So in that case, open carry does have its benefits. Concealed carry also has its benefits. Surprise, you know, like I said, element of surprise. But in the end, it's up to you what you want to do. You're free to go ahead and go out to the high traffic areas of your town and document everything that happens with the police on video. I find these very interesting. I watch a lot of these videos, and uh, they're very entertaining to me. But um, I also, too, feel in a way like some of these people say that if you don't exercise a right, you can lose it. So by all means, guys, um, you know, do what you do. Be courteous, though. I'm just saying, be courteous out there. I, I don't recommend having an attitude when the police officer comes up to you. Don't right off the bat have an attitude and say, you know, I'm pleading the fifth. Because if he got that call, he's just following up on that call. You know, he needs to follow up on that documented call. So, if the officer is giving you an attitude, then by all means, I can see why you would have an attitude as well. But if, if there's no need really to have an attitude at the at the confrontation or you know when the officer comes up to you, uh, see how his demeanor is first. And if he's being polite and nice to you, I think you should do the same right back because then it gives open carriers a good name, not a bad name, and that can help the whole community um, in the gun community. All right, guys, I hope you found this video informative. And until next time, this is H4T, and I am...